11. And we're going to be looking at verses uh, 11 and 12. So let me go ahead and read that. It says, In him we were also made his inheritance, predestined according to the purpose of the one who works out everything in agreement with the decision of his will, so that, that we who have already put our hope in, in the Messiah might bring praise to his glory. What an amazing passage. And you know what? For two verses, it's really uh, it's really impactful, if you will. And, and he's actually, Paul's leading into something. And I'm very excited to get there to be able to talk about this and what some of this means. But in him, it says that, that they have an inheritance in, in verse 11. Paul's reference is to the uh, to the Jewish nations of Israel, okay? Really, and that's what it is. But he's combining, he's talking to the church at Ephesus. And what he's trying to, what he's showing is that he's combining the two, Israel and the Gentiles there at Ephesus. He's combining the two into one, okay? And we're going to get to that in the future. But uh, let's let's go ahead and, and talk about this. This this actually goes back to the time of Abraham. And if you listen, if you look at, at Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, it says, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to a land which I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and, and the, the one who curse you, I will curse, and in in you all of the all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now there are five things um, that that stand out about this passage, and th that are that are very interesting, and should be actually to all of us should be interesting to all of us. The first is that God told Abraham to leave everything that was that was comfortable for him. He left his family, uh, he left his house, and all of the familiar things around him. Uh, Abraham didn't know where he was going other than it, it was a place that God would show him. This is actually the second uh, one. Now, that, that's interesting because I want you to take and put yourself really quickly into Abraham's uh, position. He was told to leave his family, leave his everything that that would that that would uh, you know matter, leave it all, and he would go to a place that God was going to show him. I, you, when you think about that, most of us today said, you know what, you got it. Let's pull out the map. You got to actually give me some kind of idea of what's going on here, and and uh, I I, I want to know exactly where we're going, so I know how to travel. I know how to pack. I I've got the roads down. And I can I can. I can follow all of that, and, but that's not how he said. He said, I want you to go to a place that I will show you. The third is that God would make him a great nation. But Abraham knew that Sarah was barren. Okay, now think about this. He's going to make him a great nation, but Sarah's barren. Okay, so, so you know, I'm sure that these thoughts had, had approached him, but I'm telling you, that he was going to follow God no matter what. So in Genesis chapter 11, verse 30, Scripture points out that the fact that Sarah was barren. The fourth fact is that God made it a point of letting Abraham know that it was God who would do all of these things. Okay? He made a point. In, in, in three verses, God used the term, I will, speaking of himself. There should be no doubt about who was going to do it that he would, that God would. And the fifth thing is that the whole world would, would be blessed by what God did. Okay, God let, let it be known right from the start that, that he was bigger than, than all the nations, that he was, he was going to, uh, to, to put this together himself. Then God made a covenant with Abraham. In Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 21, in those days, if two people wanted to make a covenant that was unbreakable, they would they would get a, a, a two-year-old 
uh, heir, heir, excuse me, heir, and a three, three-year-old uh, that should be heifer. But anyway, that that's a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a pigeon. And they would split down the, the middle, uh, the heifer, the ram, and the goat. Then they, they would make a, a path by, by putting each of these halves directly opposite of the, of the other the, of this path. Then both parties would, would walk down the center of the path to show that they had both made an agreement to, to do this and be unbreakable covenant. God had, had, had Abraham prepare this covenant. He had, to get, he had Abraham get it ready. But then God caused a sleep to fall on Abraham, so Abraham could not walk down the path. And God walked down that path uh, himself, showing that it was a covenant that was made by him and carried out by him, executed by him. And he did it alone. This was God's covenant that was that was unbreakable, not man's. Man didn't walk that path with God. Man couldn't take any of that, that glory. God alone made, made the covenant, and God alone carried out his plan and made it possible. The man, all was, it, was, it was all impossible for the man. Sarah was barren. The, the land belonged to, to someone else. But God turned man's impossibilities into realities. And that's how Paul could say that they had an inheritance from God. Okay? From God that they had in that. And actually, it says that, that we are his inheritance. And so when you look at that whole thing, we have become an inheritance to him. Okay? And that, that's, that's really interesting as, as we look at all of that. Now, here's the thing. If... If man, now remember the terms of the covenant. The terms of the covenant was between a, a, a greater and a lesser uh, in, in in authority. And so, um, you know, God walked that, but he wouldn't let man because, you know, what the terms of the covenant said, covenant said that if I fail to do my part, you can split me in half just like you did these animals. Now, here's the deal is that, you know what? It was it was God who provided the, the lamb that was split in, in two uh, that was that was that shed his blood because the blood was flowing and it, it got on their clothes. That that was all about blood, okay? And it was Him that provided the, the he, he provided Himself as the sacrifice. And so when we look at this, He held man out because He knew. That man couldn't couldn't uh, fulfill that covenant, and that man would die because he couldn't fill that covenant, and it was still not bringing him salvation. But at the same time, he did it himself, providing the lamb that was needed, okay, and and the blood that was needed to cleanse man. What an amazing uh, idea! What an amazing uh, covenant that he made with man, okay, and th we it, we come into that through Abraham. Now. In him, they, they were predestined, okay? And it was God's plan to form the nation of Israel. And it was God's plan to make the covenant with Abraham. And it wasn't the plan of people. In fact, they were, they were in opposition most of the time. Now, let's look at what God did according to his, his purpose. Remember, Joseph was, was sold uh, into slavery. Remember that? His brother sold him, his brothers sold him, and Joseph ended up in Egypt as the man uh, right under Pharaoh. A famine took place, and the only place to find f food was in Egypt. Joseph's brothers came to Egypt to find food, which they found, but they also found their brother. Joseph had had his family moved to Egypt, and they were, they were given the best land, actually in Goshen. And out of that event, God formed all of the tribes of Israel, and they grew mighty in numbers. The old Pharaoh died, and as a new, old, a new rose up, 
who was who was afraid of the people of Israel. He was afraid that, that they, they would take over Egypt, so he made them slaves. God raised up Moses, who God used to, to lead Israel out of slavery. And out of this, God made Israel the, his nation at Mount Sinai. God, God gave them the law to follow. And eventually, they, they were given the promised land. And out of that group, that people that God formed into his lives were touched by him. When they came out of Egypt, some Egyptians came with them during their, their time in the, in the wilderness. Other nations were touched by, by the, living of the living God as, as they traveled through them. And out of that nation, God brought forth the Messiah who would, who would touch the world. And this was God's purpose and who, who he worked all, all of this together from his own wise counsel. Amen. He, oh, his own wise counsel. It, in, his, in, his, in and for his glory, this is what, what it was about, the forming and making of his people was his glory. The word glory or to glorify means to brilliantly light up, to point to the, him, to light him up, to, to make, to, to, like putting a spotlight on something to draw attention to that one thing. So Paul is saying that, the, that they were uh, formed to, to illuminate Yeshua, to work, illuminate Jesus. God used... Uh, that those Hebrew families, okay, and God used them to bring forth a savior, and the nation of Israel illumined the Lord Jesus Christ to the lost world through Christ's birth, crucifixion, and burial, and resurrection ministry, and every every to everyone to to with with Messiah was illuminated through the nation of Israel. What an amazing, amazing event that took place there. I want I, I, I just challenge you to go back over this, take a look at it, go through the scriptures that I mentioned, and take a look at those. Um, I, I, I hope that you you are blessed. I hope that you you uh, you learn something and, and can get be be edified by this whole thing. Remember, uh, actually prescribed subscribe to this this channel, uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, send us some comments about the, the teaching and about what your thoughts are. Also, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask them. We would love to dialogue with you.